bring in Chris Sims, Pro Football Talk Live co-host and, of course, an analyst for NBC Sunday Night Football. What was your reaction to Carson Palmer mentioning Mike Tomlin's name as a possible USC head coach candidate? Well, I was surprised to hear it. I mean, anytime you hear Carson Palmer talk about USC, of course, you you perk up a little bit. He did win the Heisman. He, of course, knows some of the the big players at that school as far as you know the the guys that are tossing around the ideas of who should who should coach for their team. Um, Mike Tomlin, he'd be. I, I can't ever envision him making that move. I can't just because I think he's so ingrained in the NFL and that way of life. But I do think he could be successful in college. He's the best communicator I've ever been around, or at least one of the best. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. You know, he was in Tampa, one of the secondary coaches, uh, the secondary coach when I was there, and he's a great motivator. He really understands how to connect to people. There's no excuses or BS. And from that standpoint, and of course, knows football. Yeah, I think he could do it for sure. But uh, I, I just don't see it happening. I think he likes NFL head coach life and likes being the head coach of the Steelers. Either of those two teams last night any good? Uh, I, I mean, no, the Seahawks are not. They're not. That, that's you know, again, they'll continue to play tough and compete. But like, what what is there to be? What's there to look at to be good? I mean, on defense, okay, the two safeties are good. You know, I mean, Bobby Wagner's, you know, solid still, but getting up there in years, the Jordan Brooks linebacker, good. Nobody on the D line. You're going, oh, wow, you better game plan to stop that guy. Nothing. No corner to worry about. And then the offense, offensive line average, you know, running back Chris Carson, not healthy. And I mean, with Russell Wilson out, the best thing they got going for their team is DK Metcalf and Tyra Lockett. And it's like they almost go out of their way not to give them the ball. I I don't understand that. (laughs) So that's crazy. I do give a little hope for New Orleans. I do because I think their defense is legit, as you saw last night, and that will continue. But the offensive line can be overpowering. The pass game's a work in progress. Jameis is a work in progress right now, and so are the receivers to go along with it. So it's kind of a double whammy. And I think, you know, with Sean Payton, I have faith in him. I give them hope to be, you know, I think they can get in the playoffs. I picked them to be in the playoffs and be a pain in the butt once they get in there. If they can just get the offense rolling a little bit, maybe get Michael Thomas back, that would help. Okay, wait a minute. How long is Jameis Winston a work in progress? Well, he's a work in progress for, like, like life in the NFL away from what he did in Tampa. I mean, this he's is year re-wired. seven, though, isn't it, Chris? This is- I, yeah, I, I get it. You know, But you know, he got into a team there where, he, of course, he did some good things, and we know he did a lot of stupid things there, too. But also, they, they never really reined him in. So he's trying to rewire the robot here a little bit as far as just protecting the football, doing the right thing. You know, hey, they're, they're winning football games. It hasn't been pretty. Yeah, he misses some throws. Uh, but we're seeing the stupid plays disappear. I think that's a positive. And again, like, you know, you, you saw last night. Hey, he threw a great go ball down the right side then to Kenny Stills. I mean, I don't know. It's right in two hands. Catch it. A post route down the middle early on in the game. I don't know what the hell the Traquan Smith was doing. Mm. So, you know, they're not real talented at that position. He needs a little help there. And, yeah, he's not perfect within that offense. And I think Sean Payton, too, Dan, to your point, is is bringing him along slowly. He doesn't want to make it all about him and then him revert back to the guy he used to be and screw things up and screw things up for their football team. All right, if you're Russell Wilson, yeah, do you want to stay in Seattle? <laughs> That's a, uh, Florio and I spent a good portion of the show today talking about this topic because, uh, I mean, of course, he made waves on your show last year. Mm. And I know people behind the scenes who have talked to Russell Wilson – he wants to be in a Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes type offense. Seattle shows no signs of doing that. I mean, it's still, yeah, they got Shane Waldron from the Rams. It's still the same Seattle look. We're going to run the ball. We're going to run the ball. We're going to play defense, and we just hope to have a one-score game in the fourth quarter. Oh, great. That's fun, coach. That's what we're hoping for, just a one-score game in the fourth quarter. And then, you know, Russell pulls off magic. So he's got to be thinking about it a little bit or worried about it to a degree because I don't know if it's in their realm realm of, you know, realistic possibilities that Pete Carroll will let them change on offense and become anything else other than what we've seen really the the whole era he's been there. But I wonder, does Seattle want to keep him and does Russ want to stay there? Because they they could be two different answers there. 
and and maybe they want to. I mean, Pete is the oldest coach in the NFL. Does he right. does he want to sit here and do what Belichick is trying to do in in uh, New England? Yeah, I, I I don't know. I mean, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a big big question. I I think we're I, I would not be shocked if we we're headed towards this type of conversation when the off season's over. Where Russell's just like, hey, listen, it's coming to an end. You guys want to play defense and run the ball, and that's cool, and I respect it. But, you know, I'd like to broaden my horizons a little bit and get into three, four wides, shotgun. Let me let the game be about me and me applying the pressure on defenses and play through that instead of let's play through the running game and defense. And then when we're down by four in the fourth quarter, just ask me to make magic happen. That's, that's a hard way to live, and that's what he's been doing there for a while. Talking to Chris Sims, Pro Football Talk Live co-host and analyst for NBC Sunday Night Football. According to uh, ESPN's Dan Graziano, the Cleveland Browns are looking at an offer, contract offer, with Baker Mayfield. And uh, it would pay him in the mid to high $30 million per year to stick around. So maybe an 80% offer of what the going rate would be for a good to elite quarterback there. It's not Josh Allen money. It's not Patrick right. Mahomes or Deshaun Watson. If you're Baker... Do you – I don't know what kind of leverage he has, Chris. Sure. I mean, he's right. not Dak Prescott. Dak no, Pres- he's not. D- Dak passed on this, bet yeah. on himself, even got injured, and still ended up with his paycheck. Right. Uh, what would you do if you're Baker Mayfield, if that is the yeah, and, offer to stay? Yeah, I mean, and, and Dak, you know, even before the injury and up to that, played at a much higher level than people kind of wanted to give him credit for it now. And, you know, now everybody's like, whoa, look how good he is. And it's like, no, he was good all along. They've just gotten better as a football team finally here. I I would take it if I'm Baker Mayfield. I mean, I think your point's right. You know, again, what's the leverage that's out there? Do you really want to play that game? You're in a pretty good spot. You were the number one pick. They believe in you. You know, there's something to be said about that. And, hey, you got a team there that's, you know, of course, it it is good. Hey, they're disappointing. They're four and three. They're one of the better rosters in football, but still, like, fixable and a lot of talent on both sides of the ball to where, man, you know, the grass isn't always greener on the other side of the fence. I, I would take that if I'm him. And I think that's a solid offer by the Browns too, because you said it right. I mean, he's, he's not one of the five best quarterbacks. That's for sure. He's not in that class. And to me, like this is where the NFL and front office guys got to change a little bit. It can't always be next guy up. He gets more money. Mm. No, absolutely not. At some point they got to draw a line in the sand or we're going to have, keep having Jared Goff issues with some of these quarterbacks where they're going to go, what the hell were we thinking two or three years down the road? He's better than Jared Goff. I'm not trying to say that, but of course it's been a little bit of a roller coaster with his play you know, through his career. Uh, so I would take it if I'm him. I, I would, if I'm the Browns, I wait till the end of the year. Let, let's just see, yeah. you know, you got right. the shoulder, you're going to have surgery. Um, you know, I, you're going to have other guys available. You know, Jimmy Garoppolo may be available. Russell Wilson, maybe Aaron Rodgers. You make a run at yes. him. Like a, I, you know, I hear you. Before I sign up Baker Mayfield, and then I realize, oh my God, we, we could have had, they wanted Russell Wilson a couple of years ago. Yes, they did. Because Seattle, from what I'm told, was going to take Josh Allen, and the Browns were going to take Russell Wilson. They were going to have a trade between you know those two teams. So I I know Russ was open to that. Cleveland wanted him, and Seattle was ready to move on from Russell Wilson and get Josh. You imagine if that happened? Well, well, I know. You know, I was one of the guys that kind of broke that that story there, and you know, but yeah, I mean, that's that's it's uh, it's. Uh, it would be amazing. It really would be. I mean, yeah, uh, it, it would. It's, of course, at that time, you didn't know what Josh Allen was going to be. You knew Wilson was certainly one of the best quarterbacks in football. I'm sure, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know who got cold feet in that conversation or where that got slowed down there. Uh, but either way, the Browns went with Baker Mayfield. And, hey, the way they play, I mean, they're not – it's not – it doesn't have to be quarterback centric, right? That's, you know, again, the greatness of the Browns is their run game. It's the best offensive line in football. It's the best, it's the most well coached offensive line in football. And with those two running backs healthy, damn, they're good. They really are. And maybe they just look at it too like, okay, yeah, maybe you could get Rodgers or Wilson or somebody like that in the offseason, but there's no guarantee that happens. And, uh, 
maybe that opens up a can of the worms they don't want to deal with either. I, I, I got to wrap my head around it more, but um, I understand them staying with Baker Mayfield. He is their guy. He has shown positive signs and played really well at points. It's just every time I'm sitting there ready to go, man, he's got it. He's awesome. He looks good. He puts two or three games together where I go, what the hell? I'm not sure if he does got it. And we're back to, you know, the same conversation and, you know, who knows better than them, and hopefully they do know better than us. He's a good quarterback with great marketing. I mean, that's that, sure. That, that's that's sure. what it comes down to. He he appears to be a star, even though he's not. He doesn't play like a star, but but no, he has that's right. He has that presence. A um, couple other things here. Yeah, your advice for the Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes would be. Well, I mean, uh, you know, again, nothing new that you haven't heard. You know, of course, they got to show the ability to be able to be boring and execute and go on Breeze and Brady type drives that we used to see with New England and the Saints where it's 12 plays, 85 yards and, and bore some teams to where they get up there and start to play them differently to go, whoa, we can't just die a slow death or they're just going to surgically destroy us all game. But, but in a bigger picture, too, you know, I've broken this down on my podcast a few times, and it reared its ugly head because I watched the film in this game this past week yesterday. Mahomes played his worst game as a pro on Sunday, hands down. There's no doubt about it. Uh, I mean, he missed some reads where I'd go, there's the first read, throw it. Yeah. He's kind of looking at the rush. His pocket presence is really, I think, the most concerning thing right now. He's leaving the pocket way too early at times. He's got to watch some Dan Marino, Tom Brady, Joe Burrow film and watch how they manipulate and move within the pocket. You know, right now, I think he got into some bad habits, and I don't know this, but I'm just, this is me watching, you know, being Johnny Nerd who watches football all the time. I think last year got him in some bad habits. They couldn't protect him the last seven or eight weeks of the year. So he was always floating around because he knew, man, somebody's going to come free. I got to buy myself some time. And this year, I mean, there's there's a bunch of plays in the game the other day where I go, it's it's perfect. Where are you going? People are open. The interception. He's got Tyree killed down the left sideline. He's. I mean, it's 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 what you want. But for some reason, he leaves the pocket, and the second read's open too. And it's just a little of that right now to where he's not playing as true to form to the position as he's capable. And he needs to fix it because the offense is going to have to carry them. The defense isn't going to get much better. They're built for the offense to carry them. Expensive O-line, high-priced receiver, high-priced tight end, high-priced quarterback. It's on them to put the pressure on opposing teams and go off of that. It feels like we were looking at every team in the AFC North except for the Cincinnati Bengals. So you said, <laughs> okay, yeah. Ben coming yeah. back. They draft a running back. Maybe they got one more year of magic. All oh, the Browns are loaded. You know, they're Super Bowl contenders. All oh, the Ravens, they just beat the Chargers. They might have the MVP in Lamar Jackson. Then all of a sudden, Cincinnati comes to Baltimore. Now you can say trap game, but it's a divisional game. So I'm not buying it's a trap game. Um, are you sold on the Bengals being the best team in the AFC North or at least a playoff team? Well, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sold on them being on the playoff conversation and that type of team. Uh, again, yeah, I didn't see this coming from the Bengals. I mean, I'm not going to lie. But I will say for the last, like, two weeks, and I think Football Night in America two Sundays ago, I said, like, listen, stop everybody waiting for, like, the floor to fall out here. It's not. They're here to stay. This is – they're not going to fall apart as a football team. That's not going to happen. And I'm not saying they go to the playoffs, but they're playoff caliber for sure. You know, you look at their team, their offensive line, they're really big in the interior. They've gotten a little bit better every week. You got a star running back in Mixon. They have a good little offensive system where they draw up a few tricks every now and every week just to, to add to that. And, of course, Jamar Chase, is, he's uncoverable. I mean, he really is. He's in the conversation for the best receiver in football already as a rookie. If you play one-on-one, -on -one, your butt's going to get burned. That's just plain and simple, let alone they got other guys in the passing tree there that are good too. And defensively, Dan, they got two big guys in the middle in Ogan Joby and DJ Reader, three athletic linebackers, two real good safeties, and some good cover corners. It wasn't a mistake they were toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Green Bay Packers a few weeks ago. Yeah. They're, they're that caliber of a team, and I think they're going to be here to stay for, for the rest of the year. Uh, good to talk to you as always. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Chris. Right, thank you, Dan. Say hi to all those idiots back there with you, okay? Hey, hey, Chris says, uh, hey, hi, idiots. Hi, Chris. Yeah, yeah, I did. Hi. Yeah.
That's uh, Chris <laughs> Sims, Pro Football Talk Live co-host, NBC Sunday Night Football analyst.